It amazes me, uh, Andrew, how much gets bet every day on these uh, short-term lever plays. Uh, I, I look at amazement, the ProShares Ultra S&P uh, and the Ultra QQQ, yeah. which provides twice the, 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 yeah. the returns here. So QLD and SSO are the ones uh, to look at here. Um, and the volumes are just titanic. Every yeah, day. we saw some Friday. I mean, I'm encouraged to see that they're finally working or some investors are using the way they were designed, right? So you don't buy, you know, you don't hedge at the bottom of the market. We saw a 10% pop in the, we talked about this, we saw a 10% pop in the NASDAQ, 8% in the S&P. We actually got to even today. But everyone on Friday on my desk and the clients were saying, hey, are we close here? That's a nice move. Now let's hedge a little bit. So it wasn't necessarily a short bet. It's a percentage of the assets buying these pro shares names. You can find any sector you want in direction, short ETFs and levered ETFs. And then it allows you that little bit of hedge. And I do think, you know, again, we're in a U-shaped recovery, not a V. There's no signs that point to this being a V, right? Gas right. is 475 a gallon, right? right? We, we talked about vacation, how much it costs to go away. So I do think it'll be a little bumpy. And when you can, when active investors and active PMs can make these bets, yeah. okay, I'm just going to put a little bit short here in case we get a little move down again, that's where they really capture their alpha. So QLD is, just for everybody, make sure everybody's on the same page, is two times the triple Short Qs. Qs, yep. Yeah, so it's two times the Qs. Yeah, two times. Yeah, so if, it, if triple Qs up 1%, you up right. 2% If here. it's the long and the yeah, short. Yeah, the long. This is down. the long yep. end of that. And that's been getting a lot of play recently. Yeah. Uh, ben, uh, that being said, we've that's seen a, Wood. a strong 10% <laughs> rally yeah. in tech, 8% um, in the S&P or 9% in July. Uh, so maybe people want to hedge the latest rally and get, you know, and get other kinds of exposure. Um, there are people who think the lows could be retested fairly easy. So there's a lot of stuff out there that provides downside protection, and that keeps popping up, I see occasionally. Uh, stuff that provides option collars seem to be popular. So I'm looking at this QYLD, which is the NASDAQ 100, 100 covered calls, and it, it tracks an index that holds the NASDAQ 100 stocks, and it sells call options uh, on those stocks, essentially to collect the, the, the premiums here. Uh, and the problem, uh, Ben, Andrew, is that these products are uh, hard to explain to people, really hard. There's, there's others out there uh, that are also hard to right. explain, but they're popular amongst a certain trading community. Sure. What, how do you explain it to people when we'll say, all right, I need some downside protection? Can you, I think is, when you, is there a problem with the complexity of these products? Yeah, I mean, surely if you don't understand, like, I mean, obviously the levered ones, but these covered calls are a little bit different. You just basically can tell the people like, okay, you're gonna limit your losses to the downside, right? That's number one. You wanna limit, you don't wanna go off 30% drawdown anymore, you know this, but if you sell options, right, and, and the market moves against you, you'll be protected, but you're going to just reduce your upside. So you reduce your upside potential for these, you know, markets up 30%, how come I'm up 20? Well, because you are buying protection the whole time. It's, it's, it's really a risk appetite, right, Ben, for what kind of that client wants. If they don't want the risk, this really is their only option because it is very complex to try to hedge on your own. And that's why they're a good tool. So that's a good point. So, Ben, maybe respond to that because it, he's right. I mean, as hard as it is, for me to explain to people what these things do, it's harder for somebody who wants to hedge on their own. They do make hedging a little simpler, right? Yeah, it's a package. It, it's good. Look, I think, uh, look, Andrew hit it perfectly, but it's good news, bad news. On the good news side, you know, the toolkit has expanded immensely over the last couple of years, and it's going to continue to grow. That said, the, the negative is really trying to parse all of these different products, really understand what you're owning and and explain that to investors or even advisors who are struggling to keep up with the nuances between these products. So you cited a, you know, a couple different um, products just in the last minute, right? QYLD being one and, and some of the double or triple levered um, you know, products linked to the Qs. Those are two very different return streams out there, and investors, you know, can use them in a way to hedge risk, yeah. um, but yeah. also, you know, provide some other, you know, return stream, yeah. and that that's getting more and more complicated. So, um, you know, again, I think the burden will be on the issuers, yeah. um, and, and to a large degree, the advisors to really kind of weed through all that and, and, and try to understand. I'll give you, you know, another what, one that drives me crazy. That seems interesting, but I can't I can't explain it in any simple way. BUFR. Now, buffer. this is essentially buffer. Like, this is four funds um, that buffer declines in the S&P 500, essentially. Right. So they're designed to limit losses. They, they use options with, with spread out expirations Correct. in them. 
Uh, and it's easy to remember. That's why I'm bringing it up because BUFR is yeah, easy buffer. to remember. No, that's buffer, right. It's easy to yeah. remember, yeah. but it's fairly complex. Here. Yes. Well, the spread is good. I mean, look, when you had the products that came out with the futures, like the oil and the energy products, remember those? They were like, hey, we're rolling every month. And so you would have a systematic risk of the, of the ETF being too big. The spread out option collars really allow it to have a smooth transition. And they're laddered. I mean, that's what they are. Yeah. But I, I actually think when you're talking about how do you explain it to investors, well, the name is perfect. You're buffered on both sides. You, you have yeah. limited left. It's literally a collar. Yeah, it's a collar. And I think yeah. that who's it good for? If you have a 50 year old investor that just went through this process, and it was like, I'm not retired yet, but man, I don't want to be down when I am retired in, in 10 years. And you're getting to this period and you still want to be an ETF. So you're an RIA that represents these type of clients. Buffer is going to be a good option for you, for your clients that are in a lower risk, yeah. a lower portfolio.